Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Max Wardell over at Athletics. I just had hip labral reconstruction and we're gonna go through a lot of the rehab process here. I'm actually walking into therapy right now. Just had my two week checkup yesterday and I'm down to one crutch. I can weight bear now a little bit more, which is great. You know, I was doing uh, just kind of the two crutch walking through as we were going. Now we're heading into therapy. I've been doing therapy here since two days after the, the surgery. And I, I know I've gotten some questions. Why don't you do the therapy yourself? Well, I think it's great to have it programmed for you, to have somebody looking at it from an outside unbiased perspective. And I think there's some things that from a manual therapy perspective that are really valuable here with physical therapy. So as we walk in here, we'll just talk a little bit about what I've been working on, what I've been doing over the past couple weeks to get to the point where I'm doing really, really well. It's very minimal pain the entire time. My labrum was pretty torn up and we'll talk about the actual procedure here later in this video, as well as go through some nutritional stuff and supplementation things to consider. First thing first, I didn't ice at all after the surgery. A lot of people go, oh no ice, what the heck? Well, the literature is pretty much showing that ice can maybe increase scarring. It doesn't really decrease inflammation, but it's great for reducing pain. So if you're like, I wanna stay off the opioids, I wanna just, do this with, with no no sort of painkillers, no NSAIDs. Go, go for the ice if you want a numbing effect. Understand that it's gonna probably lead to some more congestion in the tissues, more stagnant inflammatory fluid sitting in there. So how do we combat that? I like passive range of motion, passive activities. I'm on the CPM all the time. You can see me doing, doing bending and straightening here. On the CPM, spending a few hours per day on that CPM, working with the massage gun, just to influence some fluid dynamics around the thigh, around the hip, into the groin region, working all the way up and down the leg to kind of reverberate and push some fluid around, get some of that fluid moving up through those lymphatic systems, up into some of the drainage vessels there. And then also thinking about how else do I activate that system? Muscle contraction. So utilizing a, a stim unit in EMS, you know, you have the Mark Pro out there, we have just some cheaper options if that's a little bit out of your budget right now to throw on there, try to get some muscle pumping action, spend 30, 40 minutes at a time, do that multiple times a day, things to start to influence the fluid dynamics and pump some of that inflammatory fluid out of the area and then maximize your recovery process by doing your quad sets, your glute activations, trying to contract all the muscles that are not contraindicated after the surgery and not painful. If you're not eliciting pain and you're starting to push some of that fluid out, maintain some muscle contraction, that's all great stuff. So it's a lot of easy stuff in the beginning. Now we're able to start doing a little bit more weight bearing and we'll kind of get into some therapy here. Since I just started weight bearing, I'm just doing some real easy weight shifts here for just a couple minutes, getting used to some load tolerance on this hip. It should be feeling pretty good. Like I said, I've been walking with one crutch anyway. I'm not taking myself through a lot of range of motion. I'm just shifting some weight onto that hip getting used to a little bit of load tolerance there. And I'm gonna be working with Dan today in therapy, who's our actual director over here. This is where I work. And the reason I came to the same clinic I work at is it's convenient, but it, it's also a great clinic. We got a lot of great clinicians. I've been working a lot with um, one of our clinicians, Beth here, um, doing a lot of passive range, doing some light stretching activity, getting this hip back moving. So I'm just starting with some of the, some of the really basic stuff and we'll kind of move into just a couple other variations at this early rehab stage. Like I said, we're two weeks out. We're just hitting some mini squats. Most of my weights here on this other leg, I'm trying to get a little more quad activation, just in a little closed chain here. I'm not going down. One of the things we have to really limit after one of these surgeries is hip flexion and external rotation and internal rotation. So I'm just hitting a little mini squat with a nice quad squeeze at the end. That's why I've got this band here around the knees. I'm not too worried about technique right now. I'm just trying to work on getting a little bit more load through this glute and quad in a little bit of a closed chain scenario, meaning my feet are on the floor. We'll hit maybe 30 of these. Most important thing after a surgery like this is really working on protecting what's been repaired or reconstructed. In my case, the labrum was pretty shot. We couldn't repair it, so they reconstructed it. Now, a lot of our throwers are gonna have labral repairs and these, these kind of lesions around the hip trimmed down, get some extra bone out of there. Drive leg, landing leg, and getting them back 
as quickly as possible to the field is always important, but protecting the structures that were actually repaired by the surgeon is one of the most important things. If you don't feel comfortable here, you just have your crutches. And you just, with your crutches, just going through the same exercise. My hip's feeling great. I'm not pushing it too hard. Nice low load, easy stuff. So long arc quads sitting off the end of the table where you just got a little ankle weight on are great exercise to start with. And then as you get a little bit stronger, it's not painful, you know, doing something on a knee extension machine, no matter how light it is, is a great way to get some more quad activation. Doing isometrics here, I can do both legs if I want, hold it, but really there's very, very, very low loads through the hip because I'm seated and this is primarily isolating out the knee there and the quad. So you can see I'm getting some really good quad activation here. This is one of the things that we often lose after surgery. So we wanna minimize that muscle atrophy through the quadricep. Definitely weaker than my right leg at this point, but still getting some really good activity. I'm in a good position for my hip. There's no hip discomfort. I'm getting a great burn in the thigh. One of the things that I've been kind of doing throughout this process is just working some upper body stuff doing some things that have no load on the hip, doing some machine work for the upper body. Keep the blood flowing a little bit, get the blood pressure up a little bit, and still working on some tissue, giving myself a little physical activity. Sitting there all day watching Netflix is not good for physical health, but it's also kind of boring. Stimulate yourself a little bit, work on the upper body, do some curl machine, do some seated press, do those things. I was doing them two days after surgery, whether that's recommended or not. It's just getting out there and hitting some exercises so that you can keep yourself in good physical condition, keep yourself motivated, stay away from kind of the psychological load of, oh man, I'm laid up, I'm, I'm crippled, I'm, I'm injured here. So we're on a leg curl machine once again, getting prone is good, zero hip pain here, doing just left leg isolation curls here. I'll probably hit my right leg too, a little more load. I'm actually on the lowest setting this machine can possibly go on. It's not too challenging but I'm just keeping some muscle activation and I like the machines here because they kind of keep an even amount of tension throughout the range. Nice slightly flexed position at the hip. I'm not overly extended on this machine. It's not completely flat. Getting a slight burn in the hamstring. Laying prone here is just kind of a great stretch if you're really limited in hip extension. We can also do some glute activations here, and I'm probably ready to start progressing to more advanced variations from this, but just mini lift-offs, squeezing the butt. Shouldn't get any pain in the front of the hip here. Just some little glute lift-offs. Great way to start to train that hip extension, keep the glute muscle. You can see I've got like no butt left. If I'm getting pain in the hip, I'll just do squeezes of the glutes here without the slight lift off. It's only a couple inch lift off, but if you are really tight in the front, you shouldn't feel any pain in the front of your hip socket. And I can just do 10 second holds if I want a little more isometric. A lot of different variations here. So I can do my glute sets here. I'll do them while I'm sitting in my chair. We're just doing a little bent knee fallout just to comfort. It's actually feeling really good. I know external rotation can be limited after the surgery. I was really limited before the surgery, just based on that bone. And just kind of oscillating in and out, not coming into tissue resistance. I'm not getting to the point where it even feels tight. I'm stopping way prior to that. Just nice little range. Just moving the hip in and out. It's something that we don't do as much of. And just on the CPM and walking. So just getting a tiny bit of unloaded rotation in a small range here. Same thing, I'm gonna hit a few reps here. We'll show some exercises throughout the process, especially later on, once we can do some more advanced stuff and get back into things. But really, the key is maintain as much muscle as you can right now. Start to increase the range of motion, but really first and foremost, get the inflammation, get the swelling out of the tissues, get them feeling good. Let your body recover and heal. Now I'm gonna move into the manual therapy component. Dan Gars doing some range of motion on my hip, staying in a pain-free 
and smaller range of motion. After this, we're going to move into some TMR, total motion release, which is a neurological and fascial stretching method that's designed to use the uninvolved side to improve the involved side or the involved extremity or joint. Okay, one of the hip tests and moves I like to do is, is a total motion release or TMR move. And we're gonna start with just a basic test to see how much of a difference you have in your bad leg versus your good leg. And then we'll see by using a kind of an interesting way of doing it, we'll see if we can make that bad leg a little stronger, okay? So Max, what I want you to do first, we're gonna do just a straight leg raise test with your right leg, okay? So scoot forward, put your right foot out, knee straight, hands in front of you. Lean back about four to six inches only and lift up that right leg as high as you can. Lean back a little bit more, get that right leg up as high as you can. Look where it is and how it feels. Good, bring it down. Now, are you on any 90 degree restrictions with this yeah, thing? 90 degrees, yeah. <clears throat> so I want you to bring it up just to what you feel comfortable with. Start with the heel on the ground and see how this feels relative to the right. Yeah, big difference, right? Okay, bring it back down. Was that more painful or more weak? Weak. Okay, fair. Remember how weak that one felt. We're gonna retest that in a couple minutes. What we're gonna do is actually overwork the good side. So put your hands out in front of you, right leg out in front, lean back, lift and hold that right leg up as high as you can for 20 seconds. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, go higher, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, reach closer, 16, 17, 18, 19, good, bring it down, good, take a break. <clears throat> Take a little breath and then when you're ready, we're gonna do one more set on the good leg. We always do two sets on the good before we retest the bad and we'll see what happens, okay? So do it one more time, 20 more seconds. Yep, lean and lift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, higher, 11, 12, 13, 14, reach closer, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good, bring it down. <laughs> good, those are hard. Good, okay, so now, after doing two aggressive sets on the good leg, now we just simply go back and retest the bad leg. Now, I need you to tell me honestly, does it look and feel stronger than last time, weaker than last time, or the same as last time? One of those three is gonna be the answer. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, just try it, see how it feels. It's definitely stronger. Feels better, doesn't it? Yeah. Excellent, bring it back down. Okay, so zero to 10, how bad was it the first time? 10 would be unable to even lift it off the table, or off the ground. Like a seven. Seven, what was it this time? Probably a four. Four, excellent, so seven down to four. If some is good, more is more gooder. Bad English, we're gonna do it again. Do two more sets of 20 on the right. This is gonna be your homework lift up. You count it. When you get to 10, go a little higher. When you get to 15, reach your fingers towards your toes and then drop it at 20. So the good side actually helps the bad side just by repositioning the hips and pelvis to allow the left hip flexor muscles to work better. When there's an injury, that injured side of the hip, the fascia becomes all stretched out and, and out of position. So by working the good side, we bring the fascia back to where it needs to be, the body's in better balance, and he's better able to lift the leg just because the body's in better balance and a better position than it was before. And this is so simple to do at home. It's, it's stupid simple. Good, that was a quick. Okay, you count it by fives, not by ones, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, now take, take a breath or two, give it about 10 more seconds. Okay. And then we'll see where this is now. It was a four last time or whatever, see if this feels any different, but this is gonna be really good for you to do at home. Okay, go ahead, lean and lift, yeah. Okay, Definitely that, higher. Feels better, right? Yeah, yeah it's simple, a little I easier. I'll call it a three now. Okay, good. So that's what you're gonna do for homework. So you're gonna test your left side once just to see how it feels and then do two or three sets aggressively of 20 seconds on the right, go as high as you can, retest this, it's gonna be easier. So yeah. that's good. So now, I'm actually a little bit further out here, but we're gonna go through some of the stuff you might do in that kind of period of like four to six weeks. And so what I've got here is my foot on a stool now, maybe 80, 90 degrees here, and I can kind of lean into this just starting to get a little more hip flexion, just easing in. You know, you gotta go based on your precautions, but we're starting to just do some unloaded um, hip flexion based training. And then you can start to actually do it with your chest as well, and just start to influence some hip flexion here in and out. This is the type of thing we'll prescribe to people multiple times a day. So four to six weeks, here's where you're at, doing some of this stuff. You can start to do a little bit of pelvic rotations, just lightly, so I'm turning my hips, kind of keeping my leg where it's at, just for range of motion stuff. I like this as kind of more of a warm-up based activity. And then from there, I'll kind of come into a stance where I've got all my weight on my opposite leg, and I'm actually just 
extending my knee so my foot's behind me and that actually gives me a little bit of hip extension. So while I'm kind of demonstrating this here, we can kind of talk about some of the strength-based stuff we're starting to add. We're starting to add more lateral walking um, with the band, like you've seen in the past, pretty common exercise, but some of the stuff that I want to show you here is a hip matrix. So laying on the side, just a standard clamshell exercise where you're bringing that knee out and you're kind of keeping the feet together. Then you're gonna do the opposite of the clamshell where you're bringing the foot out, keeping the knees together. Then you're gonna open up those knees a little bit and kind of bring that ankle up. Working on the outside of the hip, really targeting the outside of the hip musculature that's gonna keep your pelvis stable, that gets weak after surgery and it might've been weak already prior to. And then you're gonna bring that leg back into extension. So now it's off the table, back in extension. Then you're gonna do that internal rotation where you keep your knee still, but you bring your ankle to the sky. That's kind of our hip matrix one, two, three, four punch there. And 15 reps, start with that, 10 reps, something doable. And then as you kind of progress, more reps first, then start to add a band into it. So now you've got a band around the knees that's gonna resist you. And that's a great way to start to influence hip abduction strength, hip rotation strength without going too far into extreme ranges of motion. Move from there into a total gym squat. We like the band around the shins here to add more glute contraction. Um, just a gravity reduced position to do some squats. You can work on your range of motion a little bit here. And then you can kind of work into some stuff where you're actually standing, maybe doing a march. Um, with an aqua bag overhead. Those are all great exercises to start to add into your progression, depending on you know, how you feel first, but then also what your range of motion is and then adding in some of these range of motion activities where you're just kind of doing some nice light stuff, adding in some core strength. You can see me right over here in this, in this clip actually doing a chop and punch across. That's a good way I'm keeping my hips stable so I'm not rotating under load, but what I'm doing is I'm turning my chest, activating the core, and core strength is always important, especially for pelvic stability and hip stability. So we're starting to add some of that stuff in around that four to six week mark. Where I'm at currently in my rehab here is I'm at nine weeks. So from seven to 10 weeks, I wanna take you guys through a little bit of what we're doing kind of in that range that's a little bit different to reinforce our range of motion. I still think manual mobilizations, belted mobilizations, and a little more intense stretching done by a therapist is important here, especially if you had pretty severe restriction prior to surgery. But let's go through some of the stuff you guys can start running through on your own. Now, if you have range of motion restrictions, you can start working working into those restrictions a little bit. I've got a band assisted mobilization here where I'm actually in weight bearing and I have this thick uh, band here pulling me across, a jump stretch band, and it's kind of pulling me across and in. I can do the same thing here, kind of switching over and then having it actually pull me back and I've got it up here on the top of the hip, I'm rotating in and out of that hip. You've got to be careful based on what your precautions are after surgery. But once we start hitting seven, eight, nine, ten 10 weeks, you have more range motion. This is a good warm up base stretch and then I'll show you guys a couple more to actually increase that range out to the side and into rotation a little bit. So this is just one little warm up that we'll do with the band. Then I'll take the band to a lower, lower point, and it's always nice to get some pads for the knees here, but we'll take it driving that, that leg out and pulling and centering the ball in the socket a little bit. So get this band up into the top kind of your, of your thigh here, walk, work it out, get some good pressure on it, and then I'm just kind of working back into flexion. So I've got my weight on my knee to kind of put some compression into the joint, but then I've got my band assisting the roll and glide here component. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Based on the band pull, it's pulling down in the socket. All that really does is offloads a little bit of the pressure on the top of the socket. So if you're getting some pinching or that impingement in the top, sometimes just doing a little pressure here. Now you can add a little rotation, a little external rotation there. You can give yourself a little internal rotation, be a little more careful here. Avoid the pinch, don't go into any symptoms. Kind of avoid that. And then we'll go sideways. 
band's still up there. You can kind of come in and out of this hip. You can see this is where I'm more tight. It's kind of coming in and out. And then back and forth with a little bit of lateral pull here. So a little lateral distraction. And then I'll show you guys a static prolonged stretch and an internal rotation mobilization that you can start doing. In this stage, you can start doing some hinging some RDLs with a kettlebell, some light squats, some balance-based activities, all that stuff. It's really good stuff at this junction in the game. Great hip extension stretch here. I've got my foot up on a chair that holds my ankle out a little bit. So as I work across this way, that internally rotates my hip, which is often lost as a result of impingement. But what I'm gonna do is tuck my butt underneath me and come forward a little bit to stretch the front. And then I can kind of just turn towards my left to get a little more rotation through that hip. Once again, this has to be pain-free. If you're starting to get a pain, pain, pinch, whatever, you gotta back off. You might not be able to do it at week seven. Week nine, week eight, maybe you can. Maybe you're totally good doing it at week seven. You have to test it out. So my butt is tucked under me and I then come forward. Then I twist a little bit, should get a little stretch in the front start to give yourself a little more internal rotation. You can hang out there for a couple minutes and then you can do the opposite and we'll show you that here. This is a nice piriformis deep gluteal stretch here. I've got the figure four position. I flex my knee a bit. That takes out some of the rotation, but it also protects the knee a little bit. When I get out and let that leg extend, it can torque on the, the knee and it's not always comfortable. From here, I'm gonna hinge forward at my waist, but I'm actually trying to turn my chest towards the leg that's up. Should feel a stretch through your butt here. My chest is relatively up and I'm trying to drive this hip, this right hip in this case, towards my left knee right here. That will give me a deep stretch in the butt. I'll hold this for two to four minutes at a time. And if this is pinchy for you, choose a lower platform. You can always manipulate your platform height or you can drop back and just have your knee on and be in less rotation of your femur. As you get more comfortable, you can start working it out. You can see I'm still pretty tight here, so I'm gonna stay flexed. But you can start working that foot out. And then I'm just gonna hang out, good. And then I work into some of my strength stuff as I improve my range. These stretches, I'm doing consistently. I'm doing them every day. If I get sore, just back off a little bit. We're not running yet, we're not jumping yet, but we're starting to get more athletic. We're starting to get into some more movements, kind of like these RDL variations that you can see right here. I'm doing a single leg RDL, maybe a bilateral stance RDL, working on a little bit of lateral lunging, side to side work. All that stuff are things we're putting into the program at this point. And maybe in combination with a little bit of manual mobilization, trying to offload some of the pinching, maybe center that ball in the socket a little bit more as we do some prolonged stretches or quicker stretches as well. So we're at that four to six month mark here. We still love our lateral walk variations. I'm in the home gym today. Just gonna take you guys through a few of the exercises that, that we're using at this point in the recovery process. Lateral walks are good. I'm just gonna kind of go through some of these quickly um, just to show you guys some of the stuff we're working on. Around the knees, ankles, feet, phenomenal warm up. You can work that into something. I've got my home uh, pulley system here. And what we're gonna do with this is move into some glute rotations. So I'm basically in this split stance, I'm not getting too much bend in the knee. I'm getting a hinge forward at the waist and I'm rotating through that glute. So I'm coming into it letting it pull me, but no side bending. It's a common error we see on this exercise. And then in addition to that, all my weight here is on my left leg. So I feel it through that outside of the glute. If you feel it through the quads or the low back, you're not doing it properly. On the way out, I squeeze through that glute to drive out of that motion. Now you can do the same thing here with dumbbells where you're just kind of holding the dumbbells and rotating into it. That's a great exercise as well. I love the cable column because it can really pull you on that angle to load up the outside of that hip, get you into more athletic moves. Around this time, 
That's when you're starting to go into some of your return to running type of stuff and those sorts of things as well. One of the exercises we love to perform is a glute bridge variation. And we pad up that barbell. You start with light weights here. Focusing on a full end range contraction. Now you can also do a single leg variation with a dumbbell. The, the bilateral one really allows you to load it up a little bit more. Get that upper back on the bench, hips under the bar, walk your feet in, squeeze through the glutes all the way to that top contraction point. We use lower rep sets here, full squeeze of the glutes. And around this time, we're also starting to do more range of motion, more hip flexor stretching. If you're at this point, you're back to most of your normal weightlifting, training activities, like I said, return to run, that sort of thing. But you don't wanna neglect range of motion either. You guys might start down here on the couch stretch, work your way up. No extension through the low back. And then full squeeze the glute in that end range position for the couch stretch, working yourself back towards that wall. So a little cow stretch, you can also bring that knee out and work into the hip, driving forward a little bit, holding these for two minutes. You know, program that with your glute rotations, program that with your hip thrusts to get full extension, length and strength in the back. The glutes are the big one to continue to work on long term. Can't forget about some of the adductors. You like think about the inside of the thigh, more like your stability when you go laterally. So lateral lunges, those sorts of things are really great as well. Now's the time to start really pushing that hip just a little bit. So if you've stuck around in the video to this point, you've seen some of the things I've done in the months following the surgery. Right now, this is my nine month update. My hip feels great, I'm doing well. Some of the things I'm working on are continuing to get more flexibility, but I'm not really limited by anything in my daily life. I would say once you hit that four month, five month, point, that's when you start to push the hip a little bit. Once you're at six months, that's when you really wanna to start to push that hip as far as load tolerance. And that means going for runs, doing more aerobic training, maybe doing some plyometric and some jump training and working through things that you're gonna do or wanna challenge that hip to do long term. So as an athlete, you wanna start taking it through ranges of motion that you're going to go through when you play your sport. For me, I'm doing split training because that's something I wanna do. I'm not getting any symptoms, any discomfort when I do it. I'm not pushing too far with my motions, but I still have some problems with abduction going out to the side and a little bit with external rotation. And when they do this surgery, it's tough for them to access the back of the hip joint just because of some of the arteries that go through the back of the joint. And usually people don't have too much problem with any sort of bone abnormalities in the back of the joint, but it's something that you can't really access very well arthroscopically. So sometimes you do have a little bit of bone. I just have a little bit of a bony abnormality or spur towards the back of the joint, a cam lesion, if you will, towards the back. And it doesn't limit me with anything that I normally do in my life besides if I try to go into a deep, deep squat with my feet wide or knees out. So I don't really like to do barbell squatting anyway. It doesn't really affect what I'm doing with my training or what I'm doing with my life. But I find that I really don't have any issues besides that. With that in mind, I think the surgery is overall very successful for people when they do things properly. And I've focused on making sure I'm hitting every single step along the way, which means you're improving your overall health, you're improving your joint health, and you're working on the ranges of motion and strength aspects that you need to continue to work on. The biggest issue that I see with people after a surgery like this is they stop working on things one month, two months after they get out of physical therapy, and that's when they have problems coming back into the physician's office. So this is kind of my journey through the process. Like I said, very successful outcome for me. My hip is better now than it was prior to the surgery. I'm able to have more range of motion. I have better strength, no pain in the hip whatsoever. 
but I'm making sure that I continue to work on the things that have allowed me to be successful to this point. And that's the most important thing for your recovery is to make sure you continue to strengthen your hips. You had an issue to begin with. Let's not let any issues creep back in. Make sure to get your hips strong as possible. We'll post another video on more advanced exercises that you can do after that four and five month mark in the future. Otherwise, if you guys like this content, subscribe to the channel and we will see you guys in the next video.